In this video, the screen has been split into four terminals. We shall now switch to terminal 1. Terminal 1 is connected to the source host named as Coblin3. From the output of the HPVM status command, we can see that one BPAR named as Coblin G1 is currently running on this host. It is configured with 48 GB of memory and it has got four cores allocated to it. We shall now switch over to terminal 2. Terminal 2 is connected to the target host named as Coblin4. From the output of the HPVM status command, we can see that no VPARs or VMs are currently configured on this host. We shall now switch over to Terminal 3. Terminal 3 is connected to the source host Goblin 3. In this terminal, we shall log into the VPAR Goblin G1 via a secure shell connection through its IP address. We shall now switch over to Terminal 1. In Terminal 1, we shall run a script called Watch. This script will run the HPVM status command in an infinite loop and in intervals of 2 seconds. This will display the status of the VPAR as seen on the source host during the course of migration. We shall now switch over to Terminal 2. In this terminal, we shall run the same script Watch. This will display the status of the VPAR as seen on the target host during the course of migration. We shall now switch over to Terminal 3. This terminal is actually connected to the VPAR Goblin G1. In this terminal, we shall run a script called Watch. This script will display the name of the host system on which the VPAR is currently running. It will also display the number of times output has been displayed. Output will be displayed in intervals of 20 seconds. We shall now switch over to Terminal 4. Terminal 4 is connected to the source host Goblin 3. We shall now run the HPVM migrate command to initiate the migration process. The VPAR Goblin G1 will be migrated from the source host Goblin 3 to the target host Goblin 4. In Terminal 1, we can see that the VPAR has moved into the MGS states. The MGS state designates that the guest is the source of a migration between two integrity servers. In Terminal 2, we can see that the VPAR has been launched on the target host and it has moved into the MGT state. The MGT state designates that the guest is the target of a migration between two integrity servers. In Terminal 3, we can see that the script is running in the VPAR. The VPAR will remain active till the migration process reaches the frozen phase. All IOs to the VPAR continue to be in progress until the IO quiesce phase is reached. In Terminal 4, we can see that the init phase has completed successfully. The HPVM migrate process is currently executing the copy phase. Copy phase has now completed successfully. The IO quiz phase has also completed successfully. All pending IOs have completed and new IO requests will be put on a wait queue. The HPVM migrate process is now executing the frozen phase. In this phase, all the CPUs corresponding to the source guest are suspended. In Terminal 3, we can see that the watch script which is running inside the VPAR has paused execution and is no longer displaying any output. In Terminal 4, we can see that the frozen phase has completed successfully. With this, the migration process has completed and the VPAR has been successfully migrated 
to the target host. In terminal 1, we can see that the VPAR has moved to the NR or not runnable state on the source host. In terminal 2, we can see that the VPAR has moved to the OS state. The VPAR is now actively running on the target host. In terminal 3, we can see that the watch script which was running in the VPAR has resumed execution. It is now displaying Goblin 4 as the name of the new host system on which the VPAR Goblin G1 is currently running. In conclusion, a VPAR has been successfully migrated from a source host to a destination host without any downtime.